Welcome into Variant Roundtable. We are on episode six. Wow, we've been doing this six whole weeks already. This is great. Uh, so today, today we are going to be talking about the recent ARG. We're going to be talking about Snapshot 6. And really excitingly, we're going to be talking about some teasers from the AMA yesterday with Robert Bowling. And one of those teasers was in reference to the next live event for Dead Drop. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to give it a second and see if we can get some people to hop on in. I definitely want to hear from people today. There's a lot going on uh, in the Dead Drop community right now. We had, um, we had the, like I said, the ARG has been going on. A uh, lot, a lot of folks contributing to that in the community. Golly, I, I, I probably should have written down a list, but there were so many... Uh, people, Daft, Lolo, Artix, Spaceman, of course. Um, geez, man. I mean, Neptune, Taco. Like, there's so many community members. It, I mean, it, the, the whole conspiracy theory, uh, or as Lolo would say, conspiracies uh, thread in the Discord has been popping this week, man. And uh, shout out to the devs and Robert Bowling and Midnight Society for kind of creating this stuff and getting us involved and and um and it's really rounding out the lore of dead drop in a really unique and interesting way and uh you know the developers have talked about many times about how you know dead drop itself in game won't really be a lore narrative driven game you know it's it's a extraction shooter it's about the action but to Rob's point yesterday in the AMA, he, he did not say that it won't have deep lore. He just said that the way the lore is presented won't always necessarily be in-game in a traditional sense. And uh, this new ARG that's been floating around is uh, really a good showcase of that. It's, it's a, a real, and, and again, it's so much fun. If you, you know, I always implore people that are going to listen to this later, um, I, I encourage you to join the Midnight Society Discord, get involved with the community. A lot of fantastic people, uh, really helpful, really knowledgeable. And again, the lore of Dead Drop is something that's really cool. And, and you don't have to be a Founders Pass holder. You don't have to buy the NFT. You don't have to do any of that to be involved. So everyone's welcome. So anyway, uh, yeah, for those that are just joining or maybe you're listening later on YouTube, my name is Helmet Fire. I am your host for Variant Roundtable and the podcast that I do every week, Variant Intel. Uh, we do those every Friday. Uh, some breaking news. We will probably do Variant Intel podcasts more often than just once a week on Fridays in the near future. I haven't really nailed down exactly when and how I'm going to do that, but the idea, and it's been suggested to me before by many community members and, uh, you know, I only have one guest on at a time and having more than one guest on per show, you know, the more guests you uh, bring on, the more logistics surround that and scheduling and, you know, everything else. So it's, it can be very difficult. So getting, getting one guest at a time is uh, a better workflow management, at least for me as the host, but what I can do and what was brought up again by multiple community members is, maybe doing doing it more than just once a week. And even though I started doing them live recently, and we will still try to continue to do that, um, there are plenty of opportunities to do what we were doing initially, which is pre-recorded. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking of maybe adding like a Wednesday middle of the week uh, session and more to follow on that. Nothing is concrete yet. I'm still working out the details of that. Obviously, I got to work and see and check out my own schedule. But yes, I definitely want to bring more up.
you know, what, what's a better time that works for you? When would you like to see it or listen to it? Or when would be a better opportunity for you to join the Twitter spaces and have your voice heard? So um, let me know definitely uh, in the comments on the YouTube video later when you see this, or uh, if you uh, end up joining later, just let me know on Twitter. So yeah, more variant intel on the way. <clears throat> uh, variant roundtable Twitter spaces. I'm going to look into possibly changing the date and or time to try to better accommodate uh, more people being able to jump in. I know, you know, a lot of people are working and, you know, figuring out their lunch break. Um, we have some folks in the UK. It's a little bit later in the evening for them right now. They're just kind of starting to have dinner and everything. So, uh, yeah, it looks like we got Exag Shadow in here requesting to speak. Let's get him up on board. All right, man, what's going on? How are you? Uh, lunch break probably is the best option or after work. I'm not sure how your schedule is. Um, I know Fridays are particularly busy for a lot of people. Like, uh, I'll use myself as an example. I'm the only one on my team here today, so I'm actually pretty busy myself, but I wanted to drop by anyways just to see how things work. No, I appreciate that. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open to shifting the time or the day, perhaps. Like like you said, Fridays get a little bit uh, crazy. So uh, we got Colt in here. Welcome, Colt. So yeah, Variant Roundtable Twitter spaces, like I definitely want to give the most opportunities for people to join in and, and you know, request to speak, get their opinions in on Dead Drop, what's going on, you know, all the current events and everything like that. So I'll be I'll be reaching out to community members and of course everybody's welcome to tweet at me and maybe I'll even put up a poll. Uh, that polls seem to do really well. So uh, yeah, I'm looking at definitely shifting this a little bit. Uh, it might even help my schedule out too because usually I roll right from this into whatever else I have to do for the day and then you know 6 p.m. Eastern rolls around. We're right into variant intel for Friday and then right after that is. Friday night dead drops. So, uh, yeah, Fridays get pretty busy. So, yeah. So, like I said, we have this week, we had the ARG. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about that and cover that a little bit. Um, it's already been solved. Uh, so essentially what happened was uh, Spaceman on Twitter uh, had been messaging about uh space bob you know and you know space bob is this enigmatic figure that the dev the developers have been kind of teasing as being an actual person in the dead drop universe or possibly an npc or something so spaceman on twitter you know reached out in a bunch of different places and he, he ended up getting a response in this really cryptic message and the community worked uh, feverently to decode it. And it was an effort of multiple people. Again, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, there, there were more than 20 plus people at any given moment uh, working on this code. I don't have the list of people, but just know that um, it was not a singular effort by any means. Um, any reporting I've done on it has been secondhand. Uh, I'm not good at deciphering and breaking down code and stuff, but there's a lot of very talented people out there in the community that are. So shout out to those people. Uh, but the ARG so far, it's ongoing, by the way. The ARG isn't complete. What we can gather right now is it seems to be a method by which the developers are giving us more background and deep lore about the world of Dead Drop and the world of the existence. Now, Space Bob is more or less confirmed to be Robert Bowling. But it's really a character called Robert Avanti, who is more or less like the in-universe embodiment of Robert Bowling. And this Robert Avanti character is someone who used to be a cleaner back in the 80s. And he's not a cleaner anymore. Now he kind of fights for the variants, if you will, or is willing to help us. And, um, and he's also the author of the comic books, the ones we collect in the game. And uh, so that's really, really cool. Uh, there were some add-on uh, 
messages that were decrypted over the last couple of days. And again, it's it more or less is fleshing out the website where uh, the comic books exist, DirkSapham.com, and basically fleshing out the deep lore of Dead Drop. Right now, there's uh, some lore coming out about the climate wars, which is part of the existence and how everything you know came into being i guess for dead drop and then uh there's other um sections on the website that were presumably will be filled out later as this arg progresses but again it's a really cool thing that the developers have been doing to not only get the community involved but also distribute that information on the existence and how things came to be and and all that so yeah, again, I, I implore everyone who's new to Dead Drop, or maybe if you've kind of taken a break and you're just coming back, um, jump in the Discord, check out the Conspiracy Theory channel, and uh, you'll see all the all the information. It's broken down. Like I said, a lot of great community members helped tip in on this. I mean, people were doing everything from Photoshop to AI upscaling to uh, you know audio spectrograms. I mean they went real like full blown tinfoil hat mode and it's incredible. <laughs> so, uh, good on them. Another plug real quick, just taking a breather, uh, for everyone that is listening to this later on, or if you're new here, variant Roundtable Twitter spaces is a open forum, uh, for dead drop, the video game by Minai society co-founded by Dr. Disrespect. The purpose of this Twitter spaces is to give you a voice and give you a place to come and talk about Dead Drop, what you like, don't like, what's going on, what you're excited about, and everything in between. So at any point, everybody's welcome to request to speak, and we can have that discussion. So um, we appreciate everybody participating. And yeah, so moving on from the ARG uh, yesterday was really exciting because there was a official AMA with Robert Bowling, the studio head of Menai Society. And I, I live streamed it and uh, it was a lot of fun to listen to. We had a lot of great questions answered and uh, I actually took some notes. So they talked a lot about a, a myriad of different things. Uh, I'm just going to go off of a couple of bullet points I made uh, scratch paper here. So Somebody asked about gadgets, and the wingsuit came up a lot. Now, Robert Bowling was very quick to say that the wingsuit is not 100% confirmed, but really, if you listen to him talk about it, it sounds like it's not only something that they're really interested in, but it, they may even be prototyping it already. Now, we again, we don't have 100% confirmation of that, but he talked about it at length. They're very excited about the idea of it and the idea of other gear that could assist you in extracting from the level, right? So that could be a number of things. And they said they're they're concepting a lot of things in the background, and it is an aspect of the game with gadgets that they are, you know, you can expect more in the future from that. So uh, we've done polls before on gadgets, and I did one with like, where it had like wingsuit, you know, if you could have one of these, what would it be? And I had grappling hook, wingsuit, jump jet boost for like negating fall damage. Even, even this idea of like an extraction balloon, like a quick, a quick extraction, like for loot. Like if you get a random piece of loot, that's like really good. And you really want it out of the map. Like right now you could like trigger this balloon and send it out into the ether. And uh, so that pole actually, was the winner of that was the grappling hook an overwhelming majority of people would have picked the grappling hook first so um now he didn't really robert didn't really mention anything about that but again you know they're they said they're prototyping a lot of things they really like the what gadgets can do for gameplay and they really like things that can assist in extracting from the level so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a wingsuit or something similar in the future. And I, that's got me really excited. I really like the idea of like a one-time use. Hey, I got to get out of here real fast and let me pop this wingsuit and just dive off of the edge of a building or something. Right. So, so that's really cool. Um, somebody asked, this was a really important one that I wanted to talk about today. So somebody asked why, with the launch of Snapshot 6, did they not do a really large 
uh, like open it up to more players, like you know, uh, tower key access, right? Now there were tower keys that were given out by streamers. Uh, I I had a couple that I was able to distribute. They did provide a couple for me to give out, which was very kind of me. I decided to do that. So there were a lot of keys given out during that live stream, but it was not in a really large massive capacity the way they did it at the launch of snapshot five not even close it was very small and uh rob said the reason behind that is because snapshot six the launch of that was a really big opportunity for them to get very important crucial telemetry data so you know everything from how many people are logging on, what kind of bugs are going on, this, that, and the other. So to me, that makes a lot, a lot of sense. You know, they they, they can't have the servers bogged down too much. You know, this is a pre-alpha build of the game. And uh, so that was their answer. They needed, they really wanted that telemetry data to be as uh, genuine as they could without super, super inflated numbers. Because, you know, again, this game's super early. It's not ready to have you know, lobbies of, you know, 50, 100 plus players. It's not ready for that yet. And, you know, a little bit of proof to that was right at the end, uh, right before Snapshot 6 came out with Snapshot 5, we actually had full lobbies. And I think the max player count was like 38 or something. And we all jumped up uh, at the, we kind of did this photo op with all the players in the server and got up on the crane and I've got footage of it on my channel and a lot of other people's channels that they have it too, where it was just, it was lagging out. Like it was really struggling. The engine was struggling real bad. We actually broke the proximity chat temporarily. It sounded like somebody swallowed their, their AC unit. It was hilarious. Um, so, you know, that was an example of like, they, if they need really important telemetry data, they can't literally be melting the servers, you know, uh, with, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people so um now that being said the silver lining to that is is they absolutely intend on bringing in more people in a larger capacity which this is a really good segue into the next topic because um the next one is uh what's the next live event look like for snapshot seven or, or like that's not the question the question was and, and this was my question to Rob, and he actually got to it and managed to answer it. But he said, the question was, will there be a live event for Snapshot 7? So if we're going by what they do with, you know, when Snapshot 5 launched, they said, we're going to do three-month development cycles, which that's, we're on par for that, right? We just launched Snapshot 6 on July 11th. So, you know, three months from that point is about mid-October. So... Um, my question was, will there be a live event? And this is the answer that Rob said. He simply said 92. He said the number 92, and that's all he said. And it didn't take the community and myself long to kind of surmise what that meant. It means 92 days. So if you Google 92 days from yesterday, which today is... Uh, July the 21st. Yesterday was July 20th. If you Google 92 days from July 20th, you land on uh, October 20th, which is a Friday. Now, this is really interesting. It gets a little bit more deep than that because uh, somebody kind of leaked a what do you want to call it? Like a music track list. I think it was like the midnight protocol bot in the discord or something. And essentially it says, let me pull it up here. Give me one second. Uh, let's see profile. Yeah. So somebody uh, like put out or leaked quotations, a like a cassette tape side, a side B here's a music track list. Well, Track one, you know, it says like Claws, United, Inventory, New Squad. Well, what happens is if, if you take those words and you look vertically and read the first letter of each word and turn that into a sentence, the letters are C-U-I-N-S-Y-N-C-T. 
And if you kind of separate them and spell it out, it says C U N Sin C T or C U N Sin City, which Sin City is Las Vegas. Now, this is again, there's a little bit more to this, this theory, which I don't think it's a theory at this point. This is pretty solid if you ask me. So you have developers like echoing that C U N Sin City little teaser. At the same time of Rob saying 92 days, which is Friday, October 20th, well, and, and it being in Vegas, and well, what else is October 20th? October 20th is also the start of TwitchCon, and guess where that's being held? Las Vegas. And it even gets better. During the AMA, Rob was mentioning and hinting multiple times about the car and the car mechanic in Dead Drop, and us getting a car. And if you noticed, so in the variant guide that you get with downloading the snapshot, it has yet another teaser about cars. We had a teaser last time for Snapshot 5 where the car, there was an image of a car, and it's actually one of the comic images too, where the license plate said a Roman numeral 7. And then for this Snapshot 6 reveal, one of the... Um, fly-in title graphics during one of the sessions had headlights, car headlights beaming out with an engine revving. So they were teasing it. They're teasing this car mechanic. It's going to be huge. And Rob said it more than once during the AMA that this is going to be a big deal. Like, like Rob even said, I said, I made a joke about the team going crazy on snapshot six and they did, but like, no, like seven is going to be massive. Like, so they're teasing Snapshot 7 in a big way. They're heavily, heavily hinting at the next live event uh, being, you know, October 20th in Las Vegas. I think this is their way of, like, hinting and giving the variants and the claws a little bit of a heads up before they start their real marketing push. Because it's a little bit early to do that, right? They just launched Snapshot 6, so... They're not ready to start up the marketing engine for seven yet and all that stuff. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if 45 to 30 days out of October 20th, you start to see them really ramping up. So my personal speculation and advice would be start saving up your money for plane tickets now um, if it's going to be in Vegas. Now, look, we, we don't have I want to be perfectly clear. We do not have a confirmation that this is what it is. This is technically speculation, albeit probably very credible. We still don't have a specific time and date or if that's what they're doing, you know. So I do have to add that disclaimer. But given all the evidence and a lot of the community agrees, I think this is where we're headed. And uh, again, it'd be good to start saving up now if you intend to go to it. I personally recommend going. I think they're a lot of fun. The one in Texas recently that I went to in March was one of the most fun things I've ever been to. So, uh, yeah, so it looks like it looks like uh, possibly Friday, October 20th in Las Vegas. We could be getting the next live event for the reveal of Snapshot 7. So if anybody wants to uh, jump in and talk about it, go ahead and. Feel free to request to speak. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'll give it just a second while I'm checking a couple of notes. All right, welcome up, Shots. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Doing good, brother. So what do you think about all this? Well, personally, if uh, if it is October 20th and it is in Vegas for uh, the next live event, I think it somewhat might be a mistake to do it that way. Just because, like, if you're looking now to go to TwitchCon and stuff like that, hotels are already booked, and they are slammed full for those days. So, unless we're going to get confirmation of a date, like, 
within the next two weeks, it's going to be really hard to book flights and hotels around that time if it's in Vegas. And I know a lot of people who have been doing the ARG have been speculating it's going to be in Chicago because we keep finding references to Chicago. But I, I don't know. I'm really excited for it. I hope I get to go to it. But, man, if it's in Vegas and you can't find a hotel, it's going to be rough. Yeah, that's a good point. And I, I talked to Spaceman yesterday about this, too, because I remember the, a lot of the stuff being teased about Chicago. Um, I think now this is just what I gathered from talking to Spaceman. And, I, you know, I so don't take my word for this. I, I I'm just shooting in the dark here based on what I talked to him about. But it sounds like the Chicago thing is more referencing like the geographical region in which the refiner state in game exists. And now, now that that's a different conversation. So I yield to any and all other evidence that comes up about that. However, the Las Vegas thing, I don't think that that's uh, wrong at all. And the only reason I say that is because of the sin city reference and the fact that developers were retweeting that. So like if there's certain developers that are retweeting that whole C see you and sin city thing, like to me, that's, that's pretty concrete. Now to, to further kind of go with that, it wouldn't surprise me at all. If midnight society wanted to do something in Vegas right around the same time as TwitchCon for a couple of reasons. Number one, I can tell you from my own personal experience and what I've seen on social media in recent weeks that there are a lot of people that are not going to TwitchCon. They've canceled their plans for TwitchCon and it's too expensive for them because the pricing for their event is really expensive this year around. Um, so I've seen a lot of creators and their communities be like, uh, you know, kind of, uh, opting out of going so but to your point about hotels yeah i agree i really hope that whatever the live event is whether it's in vegas or somewhere else or whatever it is i do hope that they communicate at least 45 days out i mean the the the, the earlier the better for booking purposes but at the same time i also kind of feel like i mean it's vegas vegas is massive and depending on where the venue is because the venue may not be near where TwitchCon's holding theirs. So, so, so that's something else I didn't say earlier is, <clears throat> you know, we don't have any real confirmation from the developers. We have very credible evidence to suggest the date and location, but that the location is generalized to Vegas. It, it could be anywhere in the vicinity of that. So um, I've, I guess I just like to be optimistic and say, I'll, give Midnight Society the benefit of the doubt that they will give us enough heads up. But to your point, I hope that they do because that will be very important. Your points are extremely valid. Yeah. And I, I didn't realize that devs were retweeting the see you in C Sin City thing. I haven't seen that yet, but uh, I, I'd have to agree. I'd say that adds a level of solidity to it that there's a pretty good chance that that's when and where it is. But yeah, I just, like I said, I just hope we get enough of a notice to plan things out. Because like I said, you got to book your flight, you got to book your hotels, you got to save up money to go. So and I, I think you're dead on saying like, if you plan on going, start saving up now, because who knows how far in advance we're going to find out. And like, I don't even know what to judge it off of. I'm not sure how far out the last event was announced to even go off of if memory serves i think they started marketing the last live event about 30 30 something days ahead of time it, it, it was it was about a month i mean it wasn't to me it, that was to me that's a little bit short notice uh one month you know that's a lot to plan for on such short notice um i would have to go back to midnight society's um youtube channel and see if that video is still there when they launched it because the video of doc saying meet me in texas like that was i believe the announcement of you know like when it was going to be and i can't remember if they started marketing it before that i don't think so i think because i remember reacting to that video being like yo what it's in texas so like i think whenever that video dropped is how 
we could probably figure out, but I think it was like a month. I don't think it was like a super like big heads up that we got, you know? So that's why I'm saying like, look folks, I don't know anything concretely, but based on this information and these hints that they drop, I mean, come on. It's like, it's like they say, see you in Sin City. And then Rob answers my question about the next live event with the number 92. You look at the the calendar, 92 days from yesterday is October 20th. It's a Friday. And I'm like, okay, to me, that's them saying just a heads up, get ready. We can't officially announce anything yet, but we understand. So I'm trying my best to like, and look here, here's the thing. If I'm wrong, okay, cool. Then you've got some extra change in your pocket, right? You're saving up, right? So like, but if I'm right, then I want to spread the awareness because it is expensive. It is a lot to plan for. And if you, by hearing this, get an extra couple months heads up, then I've done my job. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely nothing wrong with saving up now, even if it doesn't happen until later. So that's definitely a good call. But, uh, one thing, when Rob answered my question yesterday, I was not happy with the answer I got because my question was, when are we getting the hideout and the shooting range back? Could it possibly be in the near future? And his answer was essentially no, but you'll get part of the hideout back with the garage. And I was, uh, that was kind of disappointing to hear for me, honestly. It's like... They don't want the influx of players right now, but they want us to test everything. And it's hard to get into a lobby and test things when there's only three people in the lobby at any given point during the day. And so, like, I, I feel like the playability of it will definitely increase once we see more aspects like the shooting range come back into it. And it's, I'm really hoping he's just like, trying to steer us away from asking and then they just drop it on us with the garage they give us the full hideout so i mean i'm i'm waiting to see that still yeah i hear you and it brings up a really good topic too so like you know the hideout is um so to let me let me start with your point so i feel like um if they if they do add in a shooting range or something like that and bring it back, like I'll never complain. I think it's really cool. I think there's utility to it. I guess uh, my only counter argument to it is is like like how much do we really need it yet? Given the fact that it's a pre alpha, that the guns are probably still going to be reworked ten times over. The meta is going to shift constantly. Uh, there's going to be more and more weapons added to the game long before it's quote unquote finished. And uh, I, if that's a line of thinking that they're doing, I could understand why they're not too worried about giving us a feature like that. Because again, it's like if, if we're shifting stuff so much and we don't even know where certain things are going yet, because we're so early, it may not make a lot of sense. And I'm just speculating, right? It may not make a lot of sense to, let them test things that are just constantly in flux, you know? And, and again, I'm just speculating, but the other thing too is, is like, you're right. Like snapshot seven very much could just surprise us and blow us away. And, and who knows, dude, this whole car mechanic thing, we might be so busy with that and whatever that brings that, you know, missing part of the hideout may not even, we might not even care. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some people will care a lot, you know, maybe it'll be like uh, really, you know, and, and I think Rob was also talking about how the hideout and what it looks like and how it's arranged and all that is actually still like subject to change. Like what we saw as the hideout, it may not look that way. It may not work that way. They're still iterating on it. They're still concepting certain things is is kind of the feel from. Like, that's what I gathered from what he was kind of saying before. So, um, but I, I'm, I'm with you. I hope that, I hope that we get it back or at least some way to like, maybe if it's even just one test dummy standing in a corner that we can shoot and get some damage numbers, 
that would be fine for me. I don't need the full blown range. I think to satisfy everyone, you could just give them one training dummy in a certain corner. And that way you could get damage numbers and test it out. I think that would be more than enough. And that, that should be theoretically pretty easy to do, you know? Um, but testing my weapon speed and how fast I can shoot. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that like that, but I could understand if it's not a super big priority. And again, when we're talking about their list of priorities, obviously this car mechanic and whatever they're bringing with it is going to be so big that they're planning, supposedly planning a live event surrounding it for October. So, I mean, I, I can't imagine how big of a snapshot that seven will be, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see um, what that's going to be. So um, yeah, let's, yeah, let me get, let me get you back up here. I know you lost connection. Hold on. Uh, here we go. All right. You should, you should be good. The highest priority to get the range back in, especially with how much everything's going to change, but uh, going off of, like what you're talking about with the cars being such a huge feature. I mean, I think you're dead on. I mean, we've seen how excited Rob is for this to come into the game. And he also was talking about how they're working on getting the four features, the gameplay done before they open up access again. And I, I have a hunch that that is going to be snapshot seven because with snapshot four, we had, the proving grounds for sector three snapshot five it became sector three well now in snapshot six we have the proving grounds for or proving grounds two and i'm assuming in snapshot seven it's also going to become a sector and i think what that leads to is the sector to sector gameplay where you can bounce between sectors in one match and i think that's what they're really waiting for before they open the floodgates and let a bunch of people in because now it's going to be you have two maps open at the same time and depending on which one you get into you have to have players on both of them so i think i think that's going to come in in snapshot seven and i think that's when we're going to see them open up access again I actually 100% agree with everything you just said. I I probably wouldn't change anything. I think every lit, like literally everything you just said I agree with 100%. Because Rob did mention again, which I'm glad that this was brought up yesterday that the the idea of dead drop has always been like the tower consists of multiple areas that are interconnected, not a rotation of maps. This isn't a arena shooter. This is dead drop where in the grand scheme of things, there will be seven sectors that in one gameplay session, you have access to visit each of these sectors in some way, shape or form. And I agree with you. What better of a showcase would it be for a live event? Remember people, these live events cost money, lots of space dust, right? It's very expensive. So Minai Society, they have a very particular scheduling of marketing and marketing dollars and how they spend their budget, and they're very smart. They have some of the best in the business working on this stuff. And if you went to the live event for Snapshot 5 or you saw any of the streams, you will understand that they don't skimp out. When they're ready to push, they put a lot of effort and a lot of time and money and a lot of talent. So – if they're going to go big for Snapshot 7 and this car feature is everything else, what Shots just said to me makes 100% sense, right? You launch Snapshot 7, you do it live, <laughs> F it, we're doing it live. And then you got this new car mechanic, boom, new sector, boom. You can go in between each sector for a match with your squad, however you're going to do that. And then everything else after that is just icing on the cake. Like maybe they add in, you know, something crazy like a wingsuit or a melee combat or who knows what they're going to add. We have no idea. There's so much, uh, you know, they obviously like to really over deliver when they launch these snapshots. So every, I agree with everything Shots just said. I, I really think that that makes the most sense, especially with Rob's conversation about 
you know, 2024 being the year of refinement, but that they may even start that refinement process after Snapshot 7, right? They've spent this last year and up until now and up until Snapshot 7 in October to really get those core details down, the core mechanics and features and everything like that. And once they launch 7 and go all out with a bang, they can really just dive deep into the polish and the art, you know, more art passes and just really, really uh, refine the game. So, yeah, to me, you know, live event equals something on a scale like that, what you said, Shots. I agree. Yeah, so uh, I, I agree with what you're saying about, like, the year of refinement that Rob talked about and everything and it coming early. I think that's 100% the case because it, what it looks like to me is all they're waiting on is to get the base mechanics of the game set into place you know the foundation that they want to build upon and i feel like all we're missing that they've confirmed is cars sector to sector gameplay and uh items that assist in extraction like the wingsuit so i think once we see those things in that's when we're going to start seeing everything get polished and we're going to see optimization happen and like rob talked about just refining everything getting everything working smooth because once they had that base mechanic in, it's safe to assume that once they just add on top of it, it's going to work the same way between them. So once you have another sector in and you can bounce between sectors, it's not going to be that hard to get another sector in because they've already done it once. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree. I think because because he was also saying yesterday, like, you know, seven they're they're you know, he. he I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he alluded to seven having like a lot more art passes in the game, you know, s some, some, some good polish, but then after seven launches, they would probably go ahead and start their refinement phase and uh, just really get this game looking crazy. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised now this, this, is what I'm about to say is a hundred percent speculation on my part, but I wouldn't be surprised if like once seven is out there, and they spend between seven and, you know, eight or nine or whatever it is, just doing that refinement process. I wouldn't be surprised if that's like a big thing that will help them get a lot closer to being on console, you know, because console certification is very hard. They, they, they require a certain level of the game's development to be finished. So I wouldn't be surprised if seven is like the start of maybe really getting close to that, but it might, you know, I don't know anything about it. So maybe, maybe that refinement process is what will get them to the console launch. And look, folks, that could be the console could be six months. It could be a year, you know, unfortunately, you know, we have no way to know that all we know is like Rob said yesterday in the AMA, it is one of the top priorities for Minai Society. They won it on console yesterday. And as soon as the people they're working with in the industry, you know, give them the green light, they're absolutely going to do it. So, and he did confirm that they're, they do have the goal of going cross platform as well. So that, that, that is confirmed that it is something that Minai Society wants to do. So that's fantastic. So anywho, uh, Let's see. Is this thing on? Test one, two. <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, I think that's about all the topics we have today. If there's anyone else that wants to request to speak and has anything else they want to add, now would be the time. I'm going to take a second to check a couple of things, and we'll see if we can give an opportunity for anybody else that wants to speak. Yeah, I actually looked on the uh, the date for the Texas thing. It was announced on February 6th. So February 6th, it was announced. Then that means March 17th was the launch date. So that's barely 40 days, not even, just over a month. Yeah, so so it sounds like, folks, that, uh, again, if if these uh, leaks or teases or whatever you want to call them, if they're to be believed for the 
potential live event for Snapshot 7. October 20th is a Friday, and uh, Vegas seems to be the location. Um, if that's true, start saving up now. Start now. Now, unfortunately, we can't look for hotels or anything because we don't know what the venue will be, and we don't have official confirmation of any of this. However, I still recommend people to start saving their money now because at this point, we're three months out. So, um, you know, three months to start saving money is a lot better than one month. So, um, and again, look, if I'm wrong or it, it changes or something changes, then, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've still gained, you know, that extra change for whenever it does happen. So, uh, Mayor Reynolds is in the house. Mayor, did you, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, we're about to get out of here. Do you have any, uh, input or any comments on the recent, uh, ARG or the leaks about the potential live event for snapshot seven? We've covered that a lot. Um, yeah, if you want to request to speak and chime in, feel free. We're, uh, we got a few more minutes. One last thing too. Keep in mind that's uh, near Halloween, so we'll probably have to compete with uh, other events going on that month. You know, for uh, getting hotels or Airbnbs or whatever. Oh yeah, TwitchCon is uh, October twentieth. Uh, it starts on the same day, the the teased days. You know, Rob said ninety two, ninety two days from yesterday is Friday, October twentieth. That's the same day TwitchCon starts. It's TwitchCon's also in Las Vegas. Uh, so people will be competing for hotel rooms for that. Um, the, you know, like you said, Halloween's going on. I, and who knows what other events, I mean, it's Las Vegas, right? There's, there's always something going on in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, I'm with you guys. I hope that if this is the planned time frame that they're shooting for, that they really start to talk about it soon. I know it's a little bit early because they just launched Snapshot 6, but for logistical reasons, I do hope that they consider that greatly. But again, that's why I'm trying to tell everybody, look, if we're right about this prediction, if if indeed Snapshot 7 live event is going to be Friday, October 20th in Vegas, the best thing I can tell anybody is just start saving up. You know, uh, things could change, things could shift, nothing's official yet, but... Again, if that's the case, we'll be glad that we started saving up. I know I am. I've already marked my calendar just in case. I'm already starting to save my space dust because Vegas ain't cheap. Uh, nothing's cheap these days. But, um, you know, and I definitely want to go. So, um, but that's about it for me. Look, again, I'll give one last chance. If anybody else wants to chime in or request to speak, feel free. This is a round table. This is a place where... All voices are welcome. So if you got any input about Dead Drop or yesterday's AMA or things you're excited about, any and all of the above, feel free to request to speak. I'll give you guys just a minute. Well, all right, folks. Well, that's going to end up wrapping it up for today. Uh, announcement, breaking news. Uh, Variant Intel tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern. I am going to be streaming it live on kick.com slash helmet fire. And our special guest tonight is none other than I am Spaceman on Twitter. Our local ARG and uh, resident lore master uh, for Dead Drop. Um, the ARG, of course, is a, is a product of a lot of people's hard works, not just any one individual. But we're going to have Spaceman on tonight to talk all about the ARG, and we're going to talk about um, some of the recent events, too, and speculate a little bit on that. But if you're interested in learning about the lore of Dead Drop and, and talking about the latest ARG with Space Bob and everything else, uh, tune in tonight on Twitch – or I'm sorry, Twitch <laughs> – no, nope, not on Twitch. It's on kick.com slash helmet fire. Again, that's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. 
and uh, we hope to see you there. Uh, Variant Roundtable, we're going to continue to do this series too, but um, hit me up on Twitter. I'm, I'm probably going to do a poll because I think I want to switch the date and or time of the Variant Roundtable as to give more people opportunities to chime in and, and jump in and participate. So keep a lookout on my Twitter for that. Like I said, I'm going to probably do a poll. I think that's the easiest way. And uh, and if and if the poll answer doesn't have your preferred answer, just comment and let me know. Uh, for these Twitter spaces, if there's a preferred time or you know day of the week that works better, yeah, let me know because I, I the goal of this is to get as many people involved as possible. So um, I'm flexible to move that around. But otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I appreciate everybody participating again. Variant Intel podcast tonight with I am Mr. Spaceman. And that's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on kick.com slash helmet fire. Thanks, everybody, for participating, and we will see you in the tower. Have a good one.